Um, just wanted to share something that happened at the start of the war that got inspired by our colleagues at Lemberg, that got inspired by our own uh, colleagues uh, that are from Ukraine, and the entire uh, client base that we have that is doing so much voluntary work. And uh, we learn also from the clients and how they're organizing and how they're trying to improve the world. So I um, wanted to show you final story, hope that it will give you some strength and, and inspiration. Um, but it started from a very, very dark place. Last year, February, everybody was in shock uh, with the unprovoked uh, invasion of, of Ukraine. And at first days, we were in shock, we were in tears, we were upset. But we also decided that we needed to turn this into something good and in, in some action. So what we did, we have uh, very good connections in Enschede, where our office is. We went to the city and we say, hey, we need a big building. What do you have for us? And uh, I know some politicians, so it was good. Uh, and they said, well, we have this empty uh, printing, newspaper printing place. Is that something for you? I was like, this is perfect, because we're expecting lots of trucks. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So we went in there, and we started talking to truck drivers. And that were Ukrainian truck drivers, they got stuck. And with stuck, I mean there were thousands of Ukrainian drivers, and all of a sudden, they were just on hold. They couldn't go back to Ukraine. They couldn't pick up new cargo. They were literally stuck on the parking lots without food, without water, without papers, nothing. So the first thing we did through my friend Ivo was uh, bringing them food and bringing them water. But then we put one and one together and say, hey, if we get some goods for you that you can ship to Ukraine, we'll give you the paperwork, we'll give you the money. Um, are you willing to drive back to your country? And actually, here you see Dima. Um, he said, yes, I want to go back to my wife and kids. But we said, you know that if you go back to Ukraine, you have to stay there, right? You cannot leave the country anymore. And you might have to fight. And he says, yes, I want to go right now. I want to go today. I said, okay, we got ourselves this truck. Um, and then we called the local media. And we say, okay, we're going to do this donation campaign. We have a truck. We thought, you know, one truck is big, 20,000 kilos. Um, we need some goods, you know, we talk to our clients, uh, to our, our partners in Ukraine, what do you need? Uh, Victoria here in the back also was constantly on social media, what do people need? Sleeping bags, uh, clothing, those kind of things at first. We put out the uh, word to the media and then we waited. <laughs> we had uh, some coffee and we're like, okay what's going to happen? Will people actually come? Did we just make like the biggest fool out of ourselves? Um, and we waited for people, and the people started to come. And you can see the space started to fill up. People came with boxes, they came with uh, plastic bags, and we had no experience doing this. The only things that we saw on TV, that people were throwing like garbage bags in trucks, and we were like, that doesn't seem like a good idea, because then how are people in Ukraine going to empty this, and they have bigger things to do than sort out big clothing. So we got boxes, we got volunteers, we asked the university, we asked the colleges, can you come help us out? And we got an overwhelming response. Here you can see this was the first evening. Dutch people, uh, Ukrainians, Russian, uh, anybody that wanted to come was welcome and started sorting out this mess. And it was a mess. You can see it's starting to pile up at the back already. And then things got a little out of hand because this campaign started to get viral and we got more and more goods. And this is the first truck that we were loading. We were not just getting bags, we were getting full pallets of products. And this word started spreading through the Netherlands. They knew we had the logistics in place. And we worked the whole night. The city came to bring us lights with generators and Wi-Fi and food. And we called restaurants. The whole region was just mobilized to out to help us they also start bringing us full trucks of goods so they did local uh, in their villages local collections and then just drove the truck to our collection point so this truck actually arrived full of stuff and we're like oh my god what have we done but then something amazing happened the first truck actually arrived in ukraine and you can see it's pretty dark because of the curfew they start offloading it. We got the pictures from our uh, colleagues at Lemberg that were doing the res reception of the first 10 trucks until things got really crazy. Um, and that gave us so much energy. So we expanded and it grew and we 
with a bunch of colleagues actually stopped working for Open Social for a few weeks just to focus on this campaign. And then I don't know what happened, but because people were seeing that our trucks were actually getting into Ukraine instead of getting stuck at the Polish border or being sent into Poland, we got a lot of requests, hey, we have a truck. Wish.com in the end sent two trucks of new stuff. Uh, we got items from Israel that were flown in for hundreds of thousands of euros, like special medical devices. We got um, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs reached out with a full truck of medicine. And I told them, well, we don't have an export license for medicine. Um, and they were like, okay, we'll arrange it for you. So our foundation, before we had a bank account, we had an export license for narcotics because there were morphine and everything needed. And we were nervous because it was a full truck of, of morphine and fentanyl and stuff that we were shipping for the Dutch government uh, and hospitals. But we were getting messages from Ukraine, um, from the front lines, from Mariupol when it was under siege. Um, one of the things that I was very proud of was to get uh, these infusions into the children's hospital that is for uh, uh, cancer patients. Uh, these NIOs that was uh, is also for the front line if you need to like jam in somebody morphine straight into the bone that's needed but it also went out uh, to the children's hospital it was one of the shipments that I was very grateful for. We've done five trucks for the firefighting United to Chernobyl, to Kiev, to Lviv, um, to the east of Ukraine. So as you can see this campaign got out of hand but we just work day and night. We made days uh, sleeping together with our truck drivers uh, in, the, in the hotel that was all sponsored. We raised a lot of money, more than 100,000 euros. It was amazing. Um, we decided to talk to the uh, special forces in Ukraine because of our contacts. They asked us for a vehicle because they needed to get vo um, people out of these uh, areas that are under siege. So they didn't paint it green. It's not an, an army vehicle. But you can see they made all the shiny things uh, covered so they can do uh, drive people out at night. All in all, we did more than 40 trucks um, of goods. We started working first with the first trucks of Lemberg, but they were like, we, guys, we need to go back to work and our office building is not suitable to receive all this stuff. Uh, so we started working with multiple organizations to receive the goods. After the first weeks, we saw that the larger NGOs started to kick into gear, the UN, the Red Cross. Of course, they're much more suitable getting food and clothing into these areas, but they take time to, to build up. So we felt that after the first phase uh, of immediate humanitarian support, we could switch to supporting local refugees in the Netherlands. We had tons of clothing um, that was more not suitable for the winter time at, at the moment, and we started from the uh, location that we collected the goods, so we transformed it into a hub where uh, refugees could pick up clothing, and later we moved this to a different location that was nicer, where they can also socialize. And it's actually still up and running. We got a visit from the Ukrainian ambassador, they're like, who are these people in Enschede, what are they doing? Um, and all in all, this is for me such a good moment to see all these people from different nationalities, different backgrounds, come together, give up their lives, stop their work, stop their studying, um, to give their best to support people that they probably don't know. We, we don't know where all these goods came and it doesn't matter um, because we just wanted to help. And I think um, for me, this was definitely the highlight of, of last year. And I also hope that our team here in Ukraine, that we visit often, that we bring goods, we brought them uh, drones, me and Robert a few weeks ago, um, that it also helps them to get through this very difficult period. Um, so hopefully next year, as Roy says, there'll be a great victory, and we'll see them all here. And in the meantime, just wanted to um, show how you know people can come together, connect, work together, can achieve amazing results. Um, so thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for everything that you're doing for your organizations. Otherwise, we would not have been possible to do this. If you want to make a donation, we're fundraising again for drones because in the end, unfortunately, that's the way forward out of this, out of this terrible conflict. Um, should I say conflict, but war.